Uh, hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. And um, I don't think I mentioned previously before, but as you might be able to tell, we're not exactly at home anymore. Um, I'm actually over in Europe, specifically in Germany, and today in Stuttgart, uh, my dad and I came to visit the uh, Mercedes-Benz Museum. We did the Porsche Museum uh, yesterday. Uh, but yeah, in a second, we're going to hop um, inside. Truth be told, I'm actually filming this intro after we've already been inside the museum, so I've seen everything, but in a second here, yeah, I guess you know, I'll take you guys inside we'll go check out everything inside the mercedes-benz museum um and yeah hopefully it's going to be a, a really good time spoiler alert it, it really is Okay, so we're here in the Mercedes-Benz Museum, and in front of us here we have what is the world's very first car, built by uh, Carl Benz in 1886. And then that has three wheels, and we move on to this, the world's first four-wheel car for a, a little bit later, which is basically a horse carriage retrofitted with an engine in it, little four, four-stroke engine in the back, didn't make much power, but for back in the day, this thing was, I guess, crazy power. We have a couple more early, early motor-powered vehicles. So we have the f well, first bike, it's the first motorized hand car, rail car. It's pretty cool. And then the first time we see a boat with an engine. And this was all Gottlieb Daimler who wanted to expand engines to use in kind of every form of transportation, not just a car like Carl Benz. This is the first attempt at making aircraft with a motor. And we have here the quadricycle, which is the first fully autonomous car built by Daimler. It's the first uh, street car here. And actually, this is a firefighting pump, so it still got pulled by horses, but it had a pump and everything to pump water to help put out fires. So that's pretty cool. World's first fire engine. Oh, this is this is a, an early bus. Pretty cool. We have what's obviously, I guess, kind of the world's first pickup truck. <laughs> Among the first buyers, it says here in Germany, were breweries. Which is a truck for beer delivers, which makes sense. You load up a bunch of stuff in the back and take it wherever you need to go. This is just another passenger car, but you can see at the back there, the seats are flipped, so people sat back to back. So, here's some more <coughs> early engines from Daimler. So, this is a 1.5 horsepower two cylinder engine. Here, this is a 5 horsepower engine. And because of this engine's design and looks, they actually nicknamed this the grandfather clock, and you can kind of see the resemblance. This is an early four-cylinder engine that made a whopping six horsepower, the one in front of us, which was upped from the original one, which made five horsepower. Here we see a few more Mercedes kind of ushering in to car what we know cars to look like nowadays. Okay, there I guess you got to carry three spare tires back in the day. In front of us here we have a 1902 Mercedes Simplex which made a whopping 40 horsepower and this is actually the oldest Mercedes car that survived that's still in existence today. So it's pretty awesome to see obviously sitting here in the museum. I, I wonder if this thing still runs. I don't know but yeah pretty cool. It was kind of the first automobile of the modern age. And this one was owned by uh, Wilhelm Maybach. So yeah pretty cool to see this that survived all the way from 1902 up to well 2023 now a little quick correction guys it wasn't owned by my it's just designed by him it was owned by some some other billionaire but still pretty cool 
Hey everyone, so as I'm editing, I just realized I wanted to jump on with a quick fact that I didn't tell you guys at the time at the museum. So if you're wondering where the Mercedes name comes from and all of this, um, so originally the company was created by Carl Benz with the help of Daimler and Maybach. It traded under the Daimler Benz name um, up until the time of Daimler's death. Then um, Maybach brought in, uh, as a chief engineer, he brought in a racing enthusiast and entrepreneur uh, Emil Jelinek. In 1900, Jelinek helped create the Mercedes 35 horsepower. He named that car after his daughter, whose name was Mercedes, um, which in Spanish translates to the word mercy. And then in 1902, the Daimler-Benz company trademarked the Mercedes name. So that's why still to this day, we have the name Mercedes-Benz on all the vehicles. And that 1902 car that we just saw in the video was kind of the first production Mercedes-Benz vehicle. Here we have a 1939 Mercedes 320 streamlined sedan, which is kind of like the height of luxury back then. And these looked, I guess, these were designed to look good going down the Autobot, and at the time they were kind of the fastest and the safest cars. Okay, so we saw the, the first bus that Mercedes built back in the 18, 1880s, and then they built this as the first bus for standardized bus service. So you can say, obviously, Benz and Mercedes do not always make cars. They've also, they also make buses. You see this kind of old uh, bus, which is obviously drove around London. I think this thing is really cool, your first double-decker bus. Yeah, you can see this is a more obviously modern coach bus. We got another bus over there. We have another old-school bus here, and then another one there. See, I can really see how um, expensive Mercedes is as a company. This bus is actually here from Argentina, and basically to stand out in the crowd in Argentina, the drivers would paint their buses in these awesome colors and put different little trinkets and stuff inside to make it a bit more personal and yeah stand up from the crowd so that you know people want to come and ride your bus and not the competition so pretty cool and the story behind this is that basically instead of scrapping it after its years of service he got it restored and now it's here in the museum for everyone to enjoy okay so to finish off this room we have a 72 300 um sel of course the predecessor to what we know as the s-class today and basically was designed to be the most comfortable car to take on a long drive then we have a 300 wagon here as well, basically same concept, designed for a family to hop in and basically go on a long drive in comfort and style. 1923 Mercedes 10 here, and this is actually the first car to feature a supercharger in it. Obviously it's called a blower back then, but yeah, it was really good and also helping to keep constant power. Obviously you get a little bit more boost, but yeah, pretty cool to see back in 1928, the first car with a supercharger on it. There's a couple more world's first here. We have the world's first light duty diesel powered truck, Mercedes Benz Low 2000. Then we have the Mercedes 260D Pullman limousine from 38, which was the world's first production diesel passenger car. So here we have the 1937 Benz 770, which at the time was the longest and heaviest Mercedes built. And basically, this was built, the uh, head of state used it and other leaders and of course back in the day a lot of um not kind of nazi high ups used it as their get around car this one here belonged to otto wolf yeah, you can see just the height of height of luxury back in the day and you can get this with or without a supercharger on the engine and then we have a 540 k beside it which is essentially just kind of the smaller version of this guy over here as you can probably tell by the roofs both of these are, are convertibles. So you either have the roof up or fold it back and have the roof down convertible. Here we have the Mercedes SSK, which was a car that was specifically designed for hill climb, hill climb races, um, sportier, better handling, and all that. And we have beside it a 500K Broadster. Basically uh, an upper class or the rich would buy this car. It was the most expensive car back in the day at 28,000 Reich marks which is about 98,000 euros today. And yeah, just super elegant bodywork. You can see all the, the lines that flow through nicely. Absolutely gorgeous interior on this. You get your rear seat hatch in the back there. Of course, your spare tires on the back. And there's a quick look at the back of the SS Cat. Actually, I think one of these is in the Forza 
games. So if you got that game, go out and take the SSK out because it's actually really fun to drive. In this room here, we have the history of Mercedes diesel-powered trucks of all, for all kinds of transport. So basically, they invented the first trucks um, back in the day. Well, Gottlieb, Daimler, and Carl Benz. And now, yeah, you can see kind of the evolution of the diesel-powered trucks. Um, for everything, and they make everything now from small vans to you can see the big car transport back there. It's basically just designed to keep people in our world uh, moving, moving along. You can, see, you can see here kind of one of the early versions of this. This nice, I guess, six wheel truck here. And there we can see here some smaller, slightly smaller cargo vans. We have this awesome transport with what looks like an SLR Sterling Moss on top. You gotta pause, well, just a 300 SLR. Definitely gotta pause and go have a look at this thing because this is awesome. <coughs> you see this is the winner of the 1955 World Championship for, for sports cars, so. Yeah, this is awesome. And of course, sitting on this really cool car transporter as well. And then as I mentioned, they have a big car transporter here, of course, made by Mercedes, which also features a couple nice cars, a couple SLs up there, which is awesome. These aren't SLs, these are E models. So we have a 280 CE, there was another I think 300 E or something up there, or SE. Yeah, these aren't SLs, these are E models from back in the day. A couple classic gas pumps back here as well, which are always awesome to see. And if only the gas prices today were the same as gas prices were back in the day. I don't know, there's a price, yeah, there's no price on this, but yeah, given that some of these back in the day were like 10 cents a liter or whatever, can we please go back to that, please? All right, and down in this room here, we have the history of <clears throat> Mercedes, um, basically first response medical vehicles. So different ambulances, fire trucks, medical car here, which I think would have run around at Formula One, Races. Yeah, we got some different ambulances and stuff here, which is awesome to see. Yeah, again, you can just really see just how much involved the automotive industry Mercedes is. I mean, considering they literally invented the automobile, I guess it makes sense that they have a hand in every every section now. But yeah, you can see police cars over there, different first response vehicles. Yeah, you can see right here, Formula One. Medical car. We got what looks like a big, I guess, snow remover. You can see that there's two massive chains on the wheels. We got a very early fire truck here, another ambulance, another fire truck over there, and yeah, a little police light stand. We got all the different call boxes for emergency. But yeah, again, Mercedes obviously invented the automobile, so it stands to reason that they also build cars as well as all these other crazy things. I've just realized that this is a unit mug. So if you've never seen a unit mug, they have multiple purposes, but it's just a crazy off-road vehicle, which is absolutely massive. Okay, so in here we move into some true icons of Mercedes. Of course, we have a 300 SL Gullwing in front of us, silver outside with the red interior, pretty classic spec of obviously with the very famed Gullwing doors. Then over here we have its successor, the 300 SL Roadster which was essentially a redesigned 300 SL for the American market. Um, there was, I guess, an American who came over to Germany and was like, who sold a bunch of the SL Gullwings, and it was basically like, hey, we can sell open top roadster to like people in sunny southern states in Florida, California. Thus, the SL Roadster was born, and that as a one-two pair for icons, I don't think it gets a lot better than those two. Then we come over here, and we have a 300 SLR, which is the more racing, Version. This one is the closed roof version. Of course, we just saw the other open top uh, 300 SLR. But yeah, basically, basically the Mercedes 300 lineup from the 1960s is probably one of the most iconic lineup of cars and, in my opinion, some of the best looking cars ever built. You just check out how much more insane this car is. We've got the side pipe exhaust, of course, with engine right in the front there. Very, very stripped down interior looking and you got this extra little wind deflector piece I guess there for wind maybe helping with bugs and rain and everything to give you a clear view when you're racing but yeah as I just said I don't think it gets much better as kind of a three pair 
of cars and you really hit all characteristics with the 300 lineup so you have, of course you have the race car basically here you have the open top cruising roadster and then you have the icon where it all began kind of your everyday <clears throat> crazy door just daily driver almost a fun fact about one of these not this particular car but the other one can only make two in the world is one of these is the car that sold for a record 135 million euros just last year in 2022 so not this exact one but we're currently looking at the most expensive car in the world until something else comes along and beats it i don't know what that's going to be another quick run through of some of the cars in here we have a 300 300 s cabriolet a over here is a don't mind me i'm literally just reading off of the things the signs is a 52 mercedes benz 300 um do the quick hustle over here this is a 55 benz 180 and then if we make the quick dash around for this truck which is just absolutely massive i mean it's on a little bit of a stand but it's not really that much higher off the ground than me and well i don't know if you can tell or not but yeah my head is significantly lower than the side of this thing but this truck is a 1916 mercedes lk 338 and it looks really good why can't they make trucks look all this good now maybe that's a quick run through this room onwards to some more of the modern stuff lovely 1964 230 SL and it's amazing to see that the SL kind of body shape and what it stands for is not changed that much if you look at a new one I'll put a picture of the 2023 SL up here somewhere if you look at that you see that the basic styling and shape or well, the shape has changed a little bit but the basic styling the basic idea and dimension stuff has not really changed from 1964 all the way to 2003 and through the entire SL range the 230 you know the 230 the 190s the 280s the 250s all those SL's design has basically been the same for almost for about 60 years. This car here is basically a test bed for new safety features like airbags and belt tensioners. So basically this car was a test mule to for the safety features to give people a better chance on a head of a collision or an event of a rollover to actually you know again have the airbags come out protect you, have the seatbelts tighten to hold you better in place. So yeah, I guess in terms of automotive safety history, this is a very important car we're looking at right here, the ESF22. We have a 190E, which is basically the original C-Class. And basically first kind of compact. You got fit five people in the back. I don't think these were very expensive back in the day. They sold, they sold like wildfire. And yeah, basically this is the start of, I guess what we could call the more affordable everyday person Mercedes. All right guys, so we have a 220S in front of us here. And then behind it is a 300 wagon and this is essentially used um, as as the measuring car so they would run that car in front you can see the cable that runs along this is full of all kinds of measuring uh, equipment to record the data from the test vehicles during the test runs and then all that data was translated i guess back to the factory and used to help develop i know the best versions of each car so that's pretty cool and I guess if you're driving either car, you have to know when like that guy's going to break whatever so that you don't rip the cable or smack into each other. But yeah, it's pretty cool that back in the day before we had crazy computers where you could just, you know, basically put your iPhone or whatever in the car and record all your data. You have to literally hook up a cable to another car to follow you as you did a test run. Pretty awesome. Quick run through some of the famous celebrity owned Mercedes. So this is Princess Diana's 1991 500 SL. Uh, we have what is quite obviously the Pope. Uh, mobile over here this 92 190 e 2.3 was owned by nicholas cage uh, this 190 sl was owned by astronaut david randolph scott and this bus is what carried the 74 world cup team around so that's a pretty cool piece of history here this 500 sl was owned by german movie star hardy kruger once again i'm just reading everything off the information sheet and then quickly we come over this way we have another little sl so we have slk 55 this was owned by lucas podolski from the german german national team soccer team and this mildly insane mercedes ml v20 this is used in lost world Jurassic park hence all the crazy bars and everything so you know the dinosaurs don't eat you and the camel 
In this hall here, we have kind of the history of Mercedes and working with I guess, different ways to power cars, mostly electric uh, as well. So we see, uh, I guess, was this a B class here, which is an F cell car. Um, we have this SLS E drive, which actually is, I guess, kind of shockingly not the one that was all in the kind of the bright um, yellow skin that we saw on Top Gear and other places. But yeah, I guess they had different specs. But yeah, the SLS E drive, which was a bit of a shock when this came out, given that obviously this thing is normally powered by a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8, which sounds amazing. But you can see, you know, Mercedes has always been at the forefront of new technologies with electricity and hybrid drive. See even right there, this van from uh, I'm guessing 1980 something. Well, yeah, this 1991 van here, which <clears throat> has was powered by fuel cells. So another electric car back in 1991. This 81 Mercedes Benz uh, 200 was the first car to feature basically cylinder deactivation. So we know that a bit more commonly now with modern cars where you know when you're cruising along at highway speeds, say you have a V8 car, it'll cut down a couple cylinders so you're only running maybe a V with a V6 or on four cylinders to save fuel, give better gas mileage and all that stuff. But yeah, this is the car that was kind of first testing that out, which is really cool to see. Then we have this, the 2017 uh, AMG GT concept, which is the first to feature the EQ badging. Of course, EQ now is um, Mercedes, mostly electric lineup, but some EQ powered vehicles also have uh, what they use for the hybrid engines as well. But this is kind of the concept to usher in, I guess, a new era with using hybrid technologies and then eventually going with electric cars for Mercedes. And of course, now you can see this design is almost what the new EQS looks like, give or take a little bit of the lines. But yeah, now we have the fully electric EQS and EQE with more cars coming down the line. So this is kind of the concept that kicked all this off. So here we have a mock-up of some of the engines. Here's a, I guess that's like a standard engine there. So we can see here, that's like the, this is the ion battery. So if we see the orange cable, so this is part of the hybrid. Well, this is the battery there. So this is like kind of what the hybrid engine setup would look like. And then this is the blown apart of an F fuel cell. So mixing uh, hydrogen and oxygen to create power. And that's what the cell would look like. And honestly, I'm all for doing this versus just completely getting rid of our ice engines, internal combustion engines, because yeah, we still need the noise and the emotion. Check this out then for a lineup of Mercedes race cars. So we got an SLS there to pick out a few. It looks like a 190E up there. Of course, we have the CLK at the back, a couple of Mar racers, a couple of Formula One cars. We got the, the kind of the tank pool racing trucks, some other old racers back there. We'll get a closer look in just a second. Yeah, this is an awesome view between like well, Formula One cars, Le Mans cars, some of the DTM cars here. Just an epic lineup because, you know, what is Mercedes without some racing cars? Yeah, so up there we got a cup. We have a, oh, no, we have a 1990 uh, race truck. This one's from 2001. Of course, we got the Mika Hakkinen F1 car here. Of course, McLaren Mercedes from... 1998. So that's Rosberg's W07 from 2016, the year he won the championship. Then this is the 2020 Lewis Hamilton's car. This is the exact car that he won his, his seventh championship in. Just absolutely epic to see this. And being that this is actually the actual car that he won in is 10 times more awesome. We got a C11 up there, uh, the C9. Further along at the back, we have CLK GTR up there, 190E DTM and wagon, of course, the SLS. We have another uh, DTM car there, of course, the SLS GT3 behind there, and then a 2018 C63 DTM car. Then we get into the real, real old school cars. The real old school cars here. The 196R for 55, 300 SLR, 722 at the back there, uh, 300 SL. That 300 SL back there is from 52. The, 7, the 722 is from 55. And this one, the 196R, is also from 1955. 
three iconic racers. And then this one here is from 1939. These are all from the 30s and no, no, it's 1930s, 1920s. That crazy thing back there is from 37. Number 36 car. That one there is from 38. These are all just absolutely insane works of art and also obviously fast race cars from their time back in the day. Yeah, these are all from the 1930s. That one there is from 1924. This one here is from 1914. Yeah, you can see here, this is kind of one of the very original racing cars. So from 1900, 14 horsepower Mercedes-Benz racing car, which for back in the day was obviously very quick. And then yeah, it's crazy to see the evolution from this back in 1900, all the way up to the most recently, the 2018. You can really see there with the 2018 DTM car, and of course the Formula One cars from today. But yeah, so you can see pretty much as you can tell, as long as people have been alive, as long as cars have been around, racing as a sport has been a thing. It's absolutely insane here to see the evolution from literally 1900 all the way to 2020. Before I go, quick look at the Vision Avatar inspired by the movie Avatar, the vision for Mercedes of the future with this really funky futuristic interior, of course, a four-seater. If you've ever seen videos of this thing driving around the move, it's absolutely cool. It's got like kind of like active fins in the back that all come up for air management and everything. Yeah, it's actually awesome. Really cool to actually see this here. Okay, so um, as you will have just seen in the video footage, the Mercedes-Benz uh, Museum is absolutely awesome. Um, I'm not sure why, I guess I anticipated maybe seeing a bit more of the modern stuff, but I guess the likes of like the SLS Black Series and you know, the AMG DTRs aren't quite museum pieces just yet. We did go, I didn't film anything, but we did see some of the new uh, SLs and the EQ series cars everything in the dealership which is located just beside it here but yeah mercedes-benz museum super awesome of course mercedes well carl benz um, is actually the, the inventor of the automobile along with gottlieb daimler and uh, wilhelm maybach so yeah, it's really cool to kind of be here in like the birthplace of the automobile and of course visiting porsche yesterday we're just hitting the circuit of all the great cars that are built uh, in this area all hailing from germany um, but yeah Really cool to see the evolution of the car from the very first car ever and then knowing, kind of seeing the EQ stuff now to see what Mercedes builds today. But yeah, um, it was a really fun run. We're going to continue on our adventure. We're actually, the main purpose of our trip over here to Europe is to go to the Belgian Grand Prix, which is happening this coming weekend. So I'll have footage from that as well. Not sure what else I'll film. We're headed to Luxembourg uh, tonight. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this visit of the mercedes-benz museum hope you guys if you watched the last video you saw the porsche museum that was fun too um, as always thumbs up uh, if you enjoyed the video remember to follow for more and yeah i'm gonna have more from you from europe in the next probably 10 days